Hi everyone, it's Christine here from Ever After Paper Crafts and I have another project today that I am sharing with you for Butterfly Reflections Inc. I want to start this video by apologizing for my crazy voice. I have a horrible sinus infection so I'll probably be doing a lot of sniffling and maybe some coughing during this video and I apologize ahead of time for that. Alright, this is the card that we are going to be working on today. And as you can see, I've done a fun galaxy background, or a night sky background, whatever you want to call it, with some Ganzai Tampi paints. I've used some various die cuts from Lawn Fawn, and then I've used these images from an adorable stamp set available at Butterfly Reflections, Inc., and this is from Darcy's Home and Heart, and it is absolutely adorable. Look at this cute little stamp set, and it is called Cast a Spell. <clears throat> excuse me so I just am in love with so many of these stamp sets and this one just was calling my name so I had to pick it up let's go ahead and get started and the first thing that I want to do today is go over how I did the night sky background <clears throat> now there's lots of different ways to do this and if you saw the last video that I did for Butterfly Reflections Inc I showed how to do a night sky with distress inks Today I'm going to use some Ganzai Tambi watercolor paints and I'm using the 36 palette pack that is available over at Butterfly Reflections. These are my absolute favorite watercolors um, for the price point especially. They are very inexpensive. Now as you can see a lot of my background is covered up here with the other elements to the card to build the scene. But I still went ahead and did the whole background because when I was planning my card out I wasn't exactly sure how much was going to be covered. Plus, it was honestly easier for me to just do the whole thing than to kind of figure out where to stop and that kind of thing. So I'm going to do the whole background with my watercolor uh, technique here to do this night sky. Now I have a cup of water off screen here and then I'm just using this size 8 silver black velvet round brush. <clears throat> and I'm just going to first take some clean water and just lightly wet my watercolor paper. Just so there's some water on it already and those colors will get moving. Now I will call out the different paint colors that I use. Um, I can't call out their names because their names are in Japanese so I will give you the number in case you want to create, in case you have this paint set at home and want to use the same numbers that I did. I'm going to start with number 67 which is a nice blue and I'm just going to put some of that, oh, randomly. This is all about randomness these starry night sky backgrounds. Now I'm coming in with number 66. It's kind of a more of a turquoise kind of blue or an ocean blue, I guess you could say. A little bit more of the 66. Now we want to get some colors in there. So I'm going to come in with some 52, which is a green. And I'm just going to put some green up here and maybe a little bit of green also on this side here. How about that? And again, there is no magic to this. I'm just sort of plopping it down, sometimes just swooshing it on, but there is no special technique to how I'm putting the color on the paper. Next, I'm gonna do like a pinkish red for just a little bit of fun color, and that's number 36 here. So I'm gonna put that down up here. Then I'm going to take a nice yellow, <clears throat> and that's, I'm gonna use number 40 for that and put that now this is a light yellow so i'm going to probably go over that a couple times so that color really kind of shows up because it is so light and sometimes you you do have to do that with whatever watercolor paints you're working with and now i'm going to do some purple with number 38 and just kind of fill in these open white spots here so now, as you can see, I've kind of mapped out where my different colors are going to go. So before I hit this with my heat tool, I want to go back over those same colors again, just to build up that color palette and make those colors a little bit more vibrant so they really stand out. Because remember, we're going to be covering this with black. And while this particular brand of paint is really good for that, I still want to make sure that you can see these colors through the black that's going to be placed on top of it. So I, I'm just using the same colors again to just go over what I have laid down already. Just going right back over where I've already laid the color down. I'm really not too worried about the colors mixing because again this is supposed to be sort of an abstract um, fun night sky background. So if the colors mix it's fine with me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my heat tool here 
<laughs> and just dry it. <clears throat> now, if you were just doing this at home and you weren't in a rush, you could very easily just let this air dry. Or if you don't have a heat tool, you could use a, um, a hair dryer. <clears throat> I'm gonna also take some paper towel and just kind of blot some of the runnier areas. But before you add your black onto the top of this, which we'll do in a moment, you just want to make sure that this is completely dry. Because otherwise, if you start adding the black on top of wet, it's just going to, um, it's going to be a big old mess. It's just not going, it's going to mix and kind of create a brown, muddy mess. Whereas if it's completely dry, the black's going to lay over top of these colors, and then you're going to be able to kind of see through them. Don't be afraid also to just have a paper towel and kind of dab at some of the, where some of the thicker wet spots are. It's going to look like a mess until you're completely finished, so don't worry about that at all. My, my advice is if it looks like a mess, you're doing it right. <laughs> because right now, as you can see, this looks ridiculously bad. So now I'm going to come in with my black paint, which is just number 20 in this uh, set. Now I want to bring the paint palette over here but real quick because I want to show you what I'm doing. Because we want this paint really thin so we can see these pretty colors underneath, I am going back in several times with my clean, wet paintbrush to get this nice and soupy or nice and wet. That looks good. So now we're just literally going to go over what we just did with the black. So we're just going over it. And where you first put it down, it's of course going to be dark or um, blotchiest and darkest. So pull that down. Use that to spread all over your project. Now we'll grab some more paint here and fill in the rest of this night sky with the black. And as you can see already, you can still you can start seeing some of these colors underneath come through. But when we dry it, you'll really be able to see those colors. And you can put whatever colors you want on the bottom here. Like I said, I just kind of picked some random ones. You can do whatever you want underneath this starry sky. Whatever colors you want, it's your sky, so have at it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and dry this again. <clears throat> Our final step will be to add the white stars, and that will really pull it all together. But as I'm drying this here, you'll be able to see that you can really, you really can see those colors underneath. It's subtle. <coughs> Pardon me, but you can see them nonetheless. And you also want to make sure before you do your white stars, you do want to make sure that this is completely dry. Otherwise, that white paint will just kind of blend and mix in and it won't it won't stand out like stars. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna take a thinner paintbrush now, get it nice and wet, really work in that white so it gets uh, kind of watered down like the black did. And then just take your finger and dab your paintbrush, hit your paintbrush against your finger and it's gonna get some of those stars down on your paper, some white spot splotches that look like stars will start to show up on your uh, cardstock here. You can do as many stars or as little, that is completely up to you. I think that that looks good. So I'm going to leave it there, clean up some white paint I got all over my workstation. <laughs> all right. And so there you have it, guys. That's how I did the night sky in this particular project. So there you have it. And you can still see, as I was talking about, you see the green, the pretty yellow, the purples, and some of those blues underneath this. And of course, also keep in mind that you're going to be cutting this down. I still had mine as a full-size A2 card base which is four and a quarter by five and a half, and I just used one of these stitched rectangle dies from Lawn Fawn. But I always cut my paper an inch larger, so I can kind of cut out the best part, if you will. So you're not gonna have this whole thing to work with. You're gonna be able to trim it down to whatever size you like to fit your card and whatever design theme you have in mind. So that's how you do it, guys. It is really that easy. Now I thought I'd do just a little bit of coloring before we said goodbye for today. Let me bring the original card over again. I thought I'd show you how I um, watercolored this cute little witch from this Darcy's stamp set. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get started. I did this with very few zig markers and a water brush, and I think you'll be surprised at how 
few markers it takes to really make a beautiful image and get lots of depth and dimension with your shading. I'm using a detailer water brush. This is my favorite water brush. It has a very fine tip on it. And this enables me to get into small spaces when I'm doing my coloring. And this is a, this Vanessa does carry this over at Butterfly Reflections Inc. And I will link to it on the blog, which I'll have a, a link to my blog in the description box of this video, um, where I will link all the products that I used in case you're interested. But I definitely recommend. I've been using this uh, detailer um, since I started doing videos. I love it. So I'm going to start with her hat here and I'm just going to use black and that is the only color that I am using here. I want to put down a little bit here. She, as you can see she's facing to the left so I kind of have envisioned that the light source is coming in from the left so the right side of her is going to be darker. That's where it's going to be shadowed because that light source is going to be hitting the left side of her which is going to create that um, light or the like the the what am I trying to say the the highlights if you will because of the light source will be hitting this side of the image <clears throat> so there's that top part of her hat now I'm going to come in and do the bottom part of her hat as well so again wherever you lay your marker down is going to be where the darkest color is so where your shadow is where your shading is the darkest part of your image and you're using the water brush to create a lighter shade to show where it's going to be where that where that light source is hitting so it's going to be lighter in color and that effortless effortless pardon me i can't speak today that effortless 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 oh my gosh <laughs> you guys know what i'm trying to say right that effortlessly you can create beautiful shading on your hat i don't know why i could not speak <laughs> that was crazy all right let's go ahead and do the little brim of her hat and for uh, I'm sorry the little ribbon of her hat and for that I used violet and light violet this is a great purple combination in my opinion I really like these colors together so I always start when I use more than one color I always start with my darkest I'm just gonna put a little on this end here and then the rest of it of course is going to be on the far right side of the image so I put the the darkest a color down first then I come in with a light violet and now I use my water brush to pull all that color out and create that beautiful highlight now let's go ahead and do her hair for her hair I used dark brown and brown and this is <coughs> pardon me guys this is another one of my favorite color combos so I'm gonna again start with the darkest and just kind of map in where I feel like the shadow is going to be and I'm going to go in sections here so I kind of break the drawing up into sections when I'm doing this just keeps me organized a little bit better for where my shading is going to be and it also um, keeps my markers fresh and wet so they can move when they're reacted to the water by the way I think I've neglected to mention that I um, I'm using Canson Exile watercolor paper for all of the work that you see here today. So for the galaxy background and for this painting, I'm using the Canson Exile watercolor paper. All right, let's go ahead and now we'll do this section of hair. And as you can see, I just come in with the dark first. So around her face, it's certainly going to be darkest. Her arm is going to create a shadow, so it's going to be darkest there. And there's going to be a little bit of a highlight here on this right side of her face. Then we come in with the lightest marker color that we're using, which is our brown. And we're just blending it with that dark brown color. And so in a circular motion, basically, I'm just kind of blending those colors together and pushing the color out into the open white space. And then I take my water brush to fill in the remainder of the space. And it creates this beautiful third color that really gives you nice highlighting and shadow. And so there you can see how we've done that hair there. Now I'm going to do the other side quickly of her hair. So I'll put the darkest color down first, again under her hat, and then kind of around her face is where it is going to be darkest, I think. And then come in with the brown to mix it together, blend it together and then come in with our water brush.
And that effortlessly, friends, is how you can create cute shaded hair. Very easy to do, and I think the results are lovely. Now let's get ahead and work on her dress. I again used violet and light violet. So I'm going to try to move a little bit quicker now for the purposes of the video. So we're not here all day watching me color. And so I don't cough your ear off. <laughs> so I came down with my darkest color first. Now I'm coming in with the light violet and just, you're not going all the way back with your light marker, if that makes sense. I'm not coming all the way back to where I first laid the marker down. I'm just going slightly in and in a circular motion, mixing it and blending it out. That'll keep that dark color intact and then will help ease the transition from the darker to the lighter color. In other words, so you don't have such harsh lines in between the different shades. And then we'll just simply pull all of this out with our water brush. If you still find that you have some dark lines that separate the different shades of color, just go back in with your water brush and give it a very light kind of um, flick with your water brush and it should iron those out. Obviously there's going to be gradations in color, so you're gonna have, it's going to transition from a dark color to a light color but you don't want it to be too harsh of a line. Here, as you can see, I think the top of, above this little line or ribbon on her dress looks great. The bottom, I'm not too happy with. So to fix that, I'm gonna come back in with my light violet again and just mix it with the little bit there of the darker color, which is the violet. And then I'm gonna come in again with my water brush. And I think that that just transitions the color a little bit better so that it wasn't quite such a harsh line. So if you're finding that, you know, you're not liking your transitions from dark color to light color, um, you maybe just need to go back in with a little bit more marker. And that's what's great about the zigs is you can go right back over what you just did and uh, you don't have to wait for it to dry or anything like that. And, um, and you can just, you know, keep blending until you're satisfied with it. I wanted this little ribbon here to be black. So I just put a little line of color down and now I'm coming in with my water brush and putting that down and I'm going to do the same thing down here with this little line of her dress as well just a little bit of color and again there's no um, magic to how I put the color from the marker down either I literally just scribble it down uh, it can't get easier than that right and I love that about these markers there's really no magical way to use them you're just scribbling the color down and then blending them together and then using your water brush to pull it back out now I'm coming back in with the violet again. Now the light violet. And now the water brush. Here we go. And isn't that cute? I just think she's adorable already and she's not even finished. So for the little um, sleeve, she kind of has little, um, looks like kind of lines of color on her sleeves. So I just alternated black and purple. Um, for that. So I just put a little bit of black down and then a little bit of purple. I didn't bother with a light purple um, on this on the sleeves because they are so thin. So um, I just use violet and that's okay too. You don't always have to use more than you know one marker. You can easily get away with just one marker as we did with the hat. You know we just use black for the hat and that worked out great. So, but I'm just putting a little bit of the black color down here to sort of add some interest to these sleeves of her dress. And now I'm going to come in with just that violet again. And there you go. Super cute. For her little boots, I'm going to do black. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of black color here on the right sides of her shoes because again, that light source is coming in from the left. So the left side is certainly going to be lighter because it's going to have that light source hitting it. There we go. And then for her little stockings, I did the same thing as I did on the sleeves, but these are so tiny that it really didn't come out that great. And it's very hard to see on my original card because I ended up just coloring them in and forgetting the water brush. And then it kind of is hard to see that there's even different colors. It's just such a tiny, thin space. So if I could do it again, I might lighten that up or I'm not sure what I would do for that. But because it's such a small space, you don't always have to have dramatic shading or what have you. It's okay to just, um, you know, have something that you just color in one color and you don't even bother with the water. That's okay. For the broom, 
I'm using dark brown only on the broomstick here. So I just put, as you saw, just a little bit of color at the top and bottom. And when these guys meet in the middle, you're going to have a nice third color there, or second color rather, that's going to look really nice. For the, um, the star on her little hat, I used, <coughs> pardon me, I used brown and yellow. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of brown and then hit it with some yellow. Now after you do that, because the brown is a much darker color than the yellow, you want to scribble off the tip of your yellow marker just to get that brown off. And then hit it with the water and you get a really pretty golden yellow color. I love that color combination. For the tail end here of the broom, I'm just going to use some brown. Just a little tiny bit there as you can see. And then just fill that in with the water brush. And all that's left now, guys, is her skin tone, and that's super easy. I use blush and flesh color for skin tones. And so I'm going to use the darker of the two first, and that is my blush color. And I'm just going to come in here around her hair, where her bangs and such are, is where it's going to be darkest. So we'll come in there, and then mix the flesh tone with that, kind of iron those lines out. So we have a smooth transition and then take your water brush and mix it together and fill in that empty space. It is that easy guys. I'm going to go over it again with these light colors on watercolor paper because watercolor paper is so thick sometimes the lighter colors um, can blend into that paper and the paper will kind of absorb it. So I find that for light, light colors like skin tone, I sometimes just have to go over it twice. No big deal, takes hardly any time at all. And the result is very nice. Now I'm just gonna quickly just do her hands and I just put the tiniest little bit. I didn't even bother with water on her hands because they are so tiny. Now for her cheeks, I did add a little bit of sugared almond pink to her cheeks by simply coming in and just doing circular motions with the marker to add little blotches of cheeks. Then I take my water brush and just go over where I put that down. And you have some really cute little blush markings for her cheeks. And that's it guys. That's how I colored this cute little witch. Let me zoom back out so you can see the finished card again. The only other thing that I did is I took my Wink of Stella glitter pen and I added lots and lots of glitter to the hat, as you can see there, to her dress. And then I also, of course, colored this cute little kitty cat and I glittered the heck out of his hat and his little bow as well. So to finish putting the card together, I used this beautiful... Um, Village Border Dye from Lawn Fawn, also available at Butterfly Reflections, and I also use the Grassy Hillside Border Dyes, also available at Butterfly Reflections. This sentiment, a heat embossed with white embossing powder, it's from the same stamp set from Darcy's Heart and Home, and it just says, wishing you a happy Halloween. And that's it, guys. This was such a fun and easy card to put together. And I just, I love scene building. And this really enables you to create a very cute scene without much effort. It really was just fun to put together. It didn't feel like work at all. This is the finished Starry Night Sky background. Again, don't worry about some of the little splotches over here that didn't get covered by ink because I cut this an inch bigger. So remember, a card front is eight is four and a quarter by five and a half. This is six and a half by five and a quarter. So that's why I don't worry about those little imperfections because they're, I'm going to cut this out. So just remember that. So hopefully these won't look so daunting. I know a lot of you want to try some water coloring but are a little intimidated by it. I was. And then I just got started and I haven't been able to stop since. So please give it a try. I think you'll really be happy with the results. I hope you enjoyed today's card. Thank you so much for crafting with me today. I will have a link to my blog and all the products uh, used Um in the description box of this video. Thanks so much guys again for stopping by and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.